it's weird, my mom said it would go like this. <laughs> So it's 1997, and my mom gets our family's first computer. It's a Gateway 2000 with, three, with AOL 3.0. Yeah, I know. I'm 11 years old, and I just started middle school, and I'm what my grandma describes as a tall drink of water. I've got waist-length hair that I wear in a ponytail with a middle part, and giant Sally Jesse Raphael glasses that dwarf my face. <laughs> There's no prescription in the glasses. It's actually a strategic choice, because me and my mom are like, okay, if you wear glasses, kids are totally not gonna make fun of your lazy eye. <laughs> because the logic being, the kids would be like, oh, that kid's coming, I'm gonna, whoa. Guys, she's got glasses. She's correcting the problem. <laughs> I don't need to step in here. <laughs> what actually happened is that they called me retard and cyclops, and they knocked my books out of my hand. Oh my god. It wasn't good, it wasn't good. But at home, my mom was busy being a single parent and so I was left alone with the internet. And that's when I discovered AOL chat rooms. There's, guys, there's tons, there's tons of them. They're in every imaginable category like music, outdoors, tons, tons of, tons of them. So I, I, I'm scoping them out and I notice the same thing as scrolling across the screen, A slash S slash L, age, sex, location. Okay, all right, I got this, all right. So I finally choose one, it's kind of small, there's not too many people, baby steps, right? And there's one person in the group who seems like she's the leader because she's greeting people as they come in. And I get in there and I read A slash S slash L, and her screen name is Mommy R-N-S-N-C-C. And I got my fingers poised over the keyboard, I'm alone, no one's watching me, and I realize I can put anything I want. Ugh, and if I could have cracked my neck, I, I, I did. I might have. <laughs> so I got, I got my fingers over the keyboard and I'm like, 35 slash M slash Brisbane, Australia. <laughs> and me and mommy, we hit it off right away. And after a couple minutes, we do the internet equivalent of taking it back to her place and we open an instant message conversation. <laughs> And the first thing she does is she tells me what her screen name means. Mommy, because she's a mommy, and RNSNCC are the initials of her husband and all of her kids. She's 35, Mormon, and lives in Idaho. And her husband doesn't pay attention to her. So now it's my turn, right? So I'm like, well, I'm a single father <laughs> of one-year-old twin boys. And I recently separated from my wife because she's got some severe emotional problems. And then she asked me what I look like. So obviously I send her a candid backstage photo of the lead singer of Savage Garden. <laughs> my favorite Australian pop band. And then she sends me a picture of herself and uh, she's in her kitchen wearing a denim dress. And she's got huge glasses. One might say a little bit like Sally Jesse Raphael. <laughs> and she also wants to see my kids. And we and parents out there, you gotta show your kids off. So I send her a picture of one of the Hanson kids as a baby. <laughs> and then I send her a picture of my little brother. But guys, they're fraternal twins, so it's cool they don't match. Okay? I did my research. <laughs> and after a while, we're talking every single night for hours. Way past my bedtime, guys. We're talking one, two in the morning, okay? And uh, we talk about everything. At 11, I know that adults have a lot of drama in their life, so I'm like, I got manic depression, okay? It's something I'm struggling with. And I researched all the antidepressants so I could be realistic and use actual brand names. And I was on Wellbutrin, and I decided that to make that more real, I had to definitely incorporate the side effects into our conversation. So I'm like, you know what? Raising two kids by yourself when you have dry mouth and night sweats, not easy. <laughs> not easy. And we talked about sex, too, which was thrilling. I told her that I went on a date with my neighbor and we had some wine, we held hands, took a shower together. <laughs> Because can't have sex unless you're naked, guys. Uh, I, also I also told her that we had oral sex because I thought that meant two naked people talking. <laughs> this went on for three years. <laughs> I was almost 14 years old and the only time I spent with people my age was during school hours. It was all about mommy, guys. Me and mommy all the way. And it was getting serious. She wanted to talk to me on the phone. I do not have an Australian accent. She wanted to meet me. And what's really screwed up is I wanted all of that too, really bad. 
but guess what, I'm a woman. <laughs> and at the time I was 11. And no wait, I was 14. So what did I do, you might be wondering. I logged off to think things over. But when I came back, I, I hadn't really come up with a plan, but I did come up with a great story about reconnecting with my estranged wife. And mommy was there for me, okay? So she was like, you're a good person, I know you're gonna make the right decision. And we talked for so long that the sun was coming up when I logged off. So I climbed to my room, it was pink with hard border wallpaper, and I got in bed, and this is what I did. I started talking out loud to my estranged wife, and I said, why do you continue to torture me? And I made her say, I love you, but I will always hurt you. And then I made a fist with my hand and I brought it to my lips and I kissed it like it was the face of my estranged wife. And I started crying and I fell into a very twisted sleep. And when I woke up the next day, I had a hard question to ask myself. Where do you go from here, Taylor? You're 14 years old and your best friend's a Mormon woman who thinks you're an emotionally vulnerable Australian man. <laughs> and so I did the only thing that I knew how. I deleted everything. And I went out into the world, and I tried being a 14-year-old girl. That's terrible.